All right, folks, we got a couple more databases I'd like to go through. Uh, the, the next one is one that's really focused in on technology. And the reason it's focused in, on technology, it's written by a bunch of engineers. Now, I know that sounds a little awkward, but uh, for instance, when you're talking about cybercrime or digital forensics, uh, you're going to have a lot more technical aspect to it. So this database is for things that are a little bit more technical. Uh, it's called the IEEE Explorer. And I'm just going to go ahead and click on it here. Now, uh, again, criminal justice and criminology borrow from a lot of disciplines. Uh, and if you were, in, for instance, it, for me, like I write in, in multiple formats, I write in uh, APA format for sociology journals, and then I write for IEEE for technical journals. This is definitely on the technical side. So you may not be accustomed to seeing articles uh, in the, that are in the IEEE format uh, or trying to find articles that are, are in the IEEE format. IEEE Explorer is the International Electri Electronics and Electrical Engineers Association. It's probably the, one of the world's largest technical groups in the in the world. <coughs> Excuse me. And IEEE are the groups that come up with things like USB, uh, USB A, B, and C standards. Those are the IEEE standards. They're the ones who rule on these things. That uh, that 80211 n or g uh, wireless wi-fi signal that you use bluetooth the way that bluetooth is standardized across all phones it's because of ieee and the engineers that, that work on these things uh, that, that we have not only the technology but that we have technology that is standardized so uh, it's a huge source for things that are technical subjects that you might explore in ieee uh, revolve mostly around homeland security and forensics for instance, um, hacking, penetration testing, whether a server can be taken down, ways of attacks, malware, viruses, antiviruses, worms, uh, Trojan horses, logic bombs, drones, huge aspects on drones, uh, spy satellites, communications. Uh, these are the things you'll find in IEEE, sort of like the smoke and mirrors 007Q sort of stuff that you're going to find, uh, which is all very cool. Um, but it may not be necessary for you. So the IEEE Explorer library is going to have a very niche uh, set of journals and articles for you to look at. Uh, if you're not writing on this, uh, then you know keep this in the back of your head or keep this in your set of tools to use in case you come across a subject matter where you may need to write on this. So what we're going to do here is um, I can guarantee you I'm not going to find much about uh, the death penalty and deterrence theory here uh, because this is much more technical but uh, let's say for instance I were doing a paper on um, how to forensically recover things from encrypted hard drives now I, I'm cheating because that's actually my entire dissertation so let's just say encrypted hard drives let's go search for encrypted hard drives we're going to get a lot. Uh, 13. We got 13. It's actually kind of smaller than I anticipated. Uh, we only want journals. Oh, and we got conference presentations. So th those can be those can be utilized. <coughs> um, let's see here. You know what? Let's, instead of hard drives, let's try encrypted storage. We might get a little bit more out of that. 951. Well, there you go. So let's say that you wanted to talk about um, how drives are encrypted. Um, well, this is it right here. This is the standards, and, and this is the, the rulings on how things get encrypted. Uh, this is the absolute, the, this is the Holy Bible for uh, encrypted storage. Uh, let's see here. Let's come on down here. Uh, how to scan for viruses in encrypted, encrypted cloud storage. Um, let's see. Network storage. Eavesdropping prevention in cloud storage. Um, encrypted personal health record data. Some of these I'm not even going to read because I even though as technical as I am, some of them I don't understand. Um, 
improving the detection of encrypted data on storage devices. If you were talking about search and seizure, uh, this might be a good article for you to use. In fact, let's just use this article for the sake of learning how to download and grabbing a citation file here. Now, this one uh, is in a well-known journal, or will be in a well-known journal, but it, right now it's under conference publications. Conference publications are a different form of peer review. You, you can still use them, <coughs> and I don't want you to not use them. Uh, conference publications are useful because the people who are presenting at a conference are typically peers. So they are, again, other researchers and academics in the field, um, and they will have a peer review process right there in the conference, uh, usually with the question and answer scenario, and usually that is a very, uh, well, the, the, the two conferences I've been to, um, I got some good questions when I presented. So uh, these were sort of a peer review process, and ultimately this article will probably end up in a journal. Uh, it may be revised a little bit, but the fact that this was given in 2015 means this article, is, this has probably been turned into an article in the last year or so, and may not have made it to publication yet. So let's just use this one as an example. If I were writing a, um, a paper on how to detect encrypted data uh, and this is actually relevant because child pornographers are encrypting the photos of children now they aren't just uh, they aren't just going underground and using them they, they're encrypting them and they're doing that to avoid prosecution so if if uh, digital forensics investigators can detect encrypted data on storage devices, they might have a better chance at actually uh, getting a conviction. So let's scroll down here. Here's the abstract as normal, a little bit different format, but something that you can certainly get accustomed to. Uh, in fact, I can tell you right there, look at that, TrueCrypt. It's an old, uh, it's an old format for uh, encrypting things on uh, on hard drives. Uh, this was actually broken and TrueCrypt is no longer an option now and because it was being used to hide child pornography. Okay, so here's the download the PDF. Um, in fact, let me just grab the title real quick. I will copy that. I can download the PDF. It'll take me right to it. Here are the authors. Uh, and again, don't be afraid to use conference proceedings. They're just fine. I'll save this. Again, it's gonna save it as a really weird name. I'm just gonna copy and paste the name from the title and you can see it downloaded the PDF. I'm going to come back to the article here and I'm going to grab that citation file and I want citation and abstract and now here we have an option and I'm kind of glad we did this. I'm kind of glad we ran into this. We don't have an RIS format here. So if RIS is not available, bib text, this one right here, that's your second that's your fallback. Use the bib text format. Oh, and it decided to be dumb. Okay, so this happens sometimes. Uh, it'll try to show you the citation directly. That's not what you want. So, <coughs> we may have to do this a really hard way. Citation and abstract, bib text. Uh, it may just pop it up anyway. Okay. So I'm going to save this. Oh, that's not going to work. Well, this is where we get interesting. So we may have to figure out another way to download and review the citation file. Okay. Well, that's okay. We can do this. And it's actually a really good time to do this. One of the databases I have not shown you is how to use Google Scholar. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to copy this and I'm going to go over to Scholar. And I'm going to paste that title right back in. And hopefully it'll find it. And it did. Okay. Now, on Google Scholar, this is where Google Scholar really comes into play. Finding articles in Google Scholar, not that big of a deal. Uh, in fact, it's probably not the best source for you to use. But finding this citation file, like this one right here, you can see it says cite, allows you a lot more option. And here's the bib text. So the, the downside is if you click on this, it's going to do the exact same thing IEEE did. It's going to show you the bib text file. That's not what you want. 
What you want to do is right click the bib text and select save link as or save as. And just go ahead and copy that title right on in. It'll be just fine. And you can use SDX, it'll be fine. All right, so what that does is it still gives me the citation file and the PDF. I know I haven't shown you the citation files yet, but you know that it's coming. Trust me, it's coming. So do this. Again, you can go to their references um, and see uh, what sources that they've used in their uh, in their article, the one that's right here. And then you can see for related articles. And then if none of this works, then you come right back to your search and you move on to the next one. So IEEE, again, much more technical, uh, but if you're dealing with modern day issues like cybercrime, child pornography, human trafficking, uh, child trafficking, uh, weapons trafficking, any sort of trafficking really, uh, dark web, uh, anything related to the internet or to something that's technical, IEEE is gonna be a good source for you. If you're, if you're writing on something that's not some way related to something technical, uh, then you may want to skip this as an option, but I think it can still be an excellent source and certainly an excellent tool for you to use uh, and utilize for your annotated bibliography as well as your upcoming lit review. Okay, I hope this has been helpful to you. I hope that the um, the quick foray into Google Scholar was helpful to you, and uh, I'll.